Good morning, this is Brandon, and uh, it is Wednesday, July 18th. Um, it's been a really nice day for this strategy. Um, I didn't take any trades last night, uh, but this morning has been, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> has been pretty nice. Uh, market obviously has been moving down, not really strongly, but fairly strongly and um, again uh, with this strategy basically I'm just trading the trend um, so I'm looking for strong trend and then a pullback and then a reversal and continuation of the trend so I'm trying to uh, trade trade my entry basically right there and just get a scalp. Um, so then the question is, what is a strong trend? What is a, uh, a nice pullback? And then what is a reversal? So that depends on my indicators. Um, and these are not my indicators. These indicators came from patient trader. And I am not at liberty to disclose exactly what they are. Maybe someday, um, but at this point, this is his strategy, and I'm just uh, I'm just trading his indicators. Um, anyway, so the idea basically is to trade with the trend as indicated by this uh, this curve here. So only looking for shorts when it's red, only looking for longs when it is green. Um, the third rail, this yellow curve here, is based on a higher time frame. So this, these are Ranko bars. Um, and the way Ranko candles work is it just paints a brick uh, every time the price moves a certain number of ticks. It, it paints a new brick. Um, so in the case of this Renko, this is a basically like a four tick Renko, meaning every time it goes four ticks, it begins to paint the next brick. So every every sort of step on this ladder is four ticks or one point. <clears throat> so I also have a six tick Ranko, um, same NQ market, but each brick is six ticks. So this is like the higher time frame, even though this is not based on time, this is based purely on price movement, which is one of the things I really like about Ranko is it helps you it helps me to visualize the trend and helps me to visualize the way price is moving without all of the noise uh, that you would get on a time chart or a tick chart. Um, so trade with the trend um, and also trade with the higher time frame or the uh, bigger picture trend which is indicated by the yellow curve. So. Uh, I'm only taking shorts when price is below the third rail, as he calls it, um, and I'm only taking longs when price is above the third rail. Excuse me. Now, we need a nice move which means the uh, in this case notice the trend went from green there was a pretty decent move up which caused the trend line to turn green and then there was a nice move down which caused the uh, trend line to turn red so that's the first part that we need now the second part that we need is a good pullback um, in this case we want the pullback to come all the way back and close over the trend line but 
we don't want the trend line to change color. That's what constitutes a, a good pullback in this strategy. So this pullback was not enough. Um, this pullback was too much. So this one didn't close over the trend line. This one closed over the trend line, but kept going, and the trend line actually turned green. So that invalidates the setup. This pullback is considered too deep, and uh, the trend could be reversing. Um, so we don't want to take this trade. Now, price kind of consolidates here. And uh, to be honest, I was really iffy about taking this particular trade because notice the low, and then it made a higher low, and then it made another higher low, and also made some higher highs. So that looked to me like you know, maybe this is reversing. This market is trying to head higher here, um, which made me worried about taking this setup. And I, for, for a moment, I actually didn't have my order. I put my order in there, and then I canceled it for a while and just kind of watched the price action, um, and then I put my order back in. So uh, the trend line is green. It goes back to red. Um, I was ready for a setup right here, but obviously the pullback was too deep. Um, trend line is green again. Now the trend line goes red again right here. And notice the pullback here. It closed over the red, over the trend line, but the trend line kept staying red. And then we got the reversal candle and I took the trade. Um, Again, this with this strategy, my target is 20 ticks and my stop is 28 ticks. So underwater a little bit on the risk to reward, but um, as long as we get 60% or more uh, on our win rate, the trader's equation works out to be a, a net profit. Very similar setup right here. Um, this was my one and done. So the way I'm trading right now, this is all on SIM, but uh, I am pretending that it's live trading. And then my plan is when it is actually live trading, I will um, trade until I'm profitable on the day, even if it's just a single tick. And then I will switch to SIM for continued practice. Um, so in this case, everything is simulated, so I'm calling it live sim and sim sim. Um, and I was, the first trade was a winner, so that was the one and done, which I've been doing that a lot lately. $100, uh, 20 ticks is $100 on the NQ, um, plus I pay $3.60 for a round trip commission per contract. So that was it for the live SIM trading and I went on obviously and continued to trade SIM SIM just for the practice. Um, and this was a very similar setup. Trend line changed back to red here. Um, continuing to make lower highs here, continuing to stay below the third rail, a nice pullback and close over the trend line, reversal and an easy trade. Now technically you have a green trend line here, so the trend is up. You have a pullback that closes below but doesn't change the color of the trend line and a reversal. So this is, mechanically speaking, strictly speaking, this is a long setup. Um, however, you know, price even closed above the third rail, so it's technically a long. However, um, I'm trying to be more selective now. After the taking the 100 trades um, strictly mechanically, uh, now I'm being more selective and uh, obviously chose to skip that trade. Um, definitely it seems to me like the bears are in control, at least so far this morning, so I'm not looking for any longs, especially so far above this recent low. Um, if anything, I'd be looking to buy the lows if I'm looking to buy at all, but I'm not even looking to buy at all in this market so far. 
Now that's actually a valid setup right there. Um, and I, if I hadn't been talking, um, I probably would have taken that because it does seem to look like um, price is finding a little bit more of a bottom here and maybe starting to reverse. So we'll just see if that ends up working out. Okay, well, price came back. Um, it only went one, two, three, about 15 ticks maybe um, towards the target. Didn't, didn't even hit the 18 tick mark. So we'll see how that works out. So yeah, anyway, I skipped this trade even though it was mechanically a valid setup to go long. Um, and then the, the trend line went back to red and we got a third valid setup here to go to take a third short so you see i'm up 15 points this morning overall of course with the one and done strategy the policy only up the five points um and uh yeah so i'll leave the screen recorder on and we'll see how this trade works out This strategy is pretty simple. Um, it's not rocket science, um, but one of the challenges to trading like this is being disciplined. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example right now. I, I, I'm a little bit worried about this trade, um, and I have a temptation to close this trade for one or two ticks of profit and just get out of it. Um, but that would not be discipline. Um, so the strategy is 20 tick target, 28 tick stop and let the chips fall where they may. Um, this is a game of probabilities and I've back tested this strategy and forward tested this strategy and all of that testing was based on a 20 tick target and a 28 tick stop. It wasn't based on, well, I don't feel good about this trade anymore. I'm going to close it for two ticks. So in order for the probabilities as I've tested them to actually play out, I need to sit in this trade and not mess with the orders. Just let it play out. It's like, it, it's like the casino hosting a blackjack game. They're not going to stop the game in the middle of a hand. They're going to let each and every hand play out, however it plays out. And even if the players... Um, you know, even if the dealer's busting like every hand, hand after hand after hand, they're not going to stop playing the game. They're going to let their probabilities work themselves out. And it looks like this trade is not doing well. It was too early. Um, this is again where. Uh, you know, these, these setups, these couple of setups here, these few setups were 
pretty clear cut. This is definitely questionable because um, you know the Bears have shown a lot of strength so far today, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit premature perhaps to be betting on the Bulls at this point. Um, but you know this this setup. So this setup, this particular setup, occurring so close to the third rail. The probabilities probably aren't as good as these other setups. It's, it's not going to work out as often. It may still be a profitable um, setup. In other words, it may still have a 60% win rate. This particular setup, um, but it might be less than 60%, and it might be less than the probabilities for these particular setups uh, to be betting on the bulls when the third rail is essentially flat like this or trying trying to reverse and turn up um you know and obviously this one didn't work out this one to me looks a little bit different um it's the third rail has already slightly started to curl up here where it had been essentially flat over here um, also we had this kind of a false start and a slightly higher high. Um, the trend line was getting closer to the third rail. So I mean, you see here the trend line actually curled, uh, crossed over and went above the third rail. So I don't know, it might still it might still work out, but yeah, this setup looks better to me than this setup. But um, I'm pretty sure this is one that patient trader would skip. Pretty darn sure about that. Um, he doesn't like to take trades that are initiated so close to the third rail. I've had some success with those. Um, but yeah, this one was kind of sketchy given that price had been so, uh, so bearish so far today. But that's exactly why these kinds of trades will work out sometimes is that, you know, everybody, everybody who's looking at this chart can see that the bears are winning today. So, you know, you get a pullback, it goes down, you get a pullback, it goes down, you get a pullback. And if it fails to go down, you're going to end up with a lot of traders that are expecting it to go down and they end up being trapped they have to exit their positions when it doesn't when it fails to go down uh, which looks like it's doing now and so you have a bunch of um, shorts that are running for the exits meaning they're buying they're closing those short positions they're buying and price quickly jumps up at least that's what we're hoping for So you'll see if, if this can reach 18 ticks, um, you'll see my stop will automatically move to uh, break even plus two ticks. Reason I do plus two is because sometimes you'll get a single tick of slippage, maybe even two ticks. Um, but normally you don't get much slippage, at most one tick of slippage when trading the NQ with a stop order like that. Um, so, you know, I don't want to put it at a plus one, get a, get a tick of slippage and end up losing money on the commissions. I'd like to get at least one tick to pay for the commissions. That way it's a, it's a legitimately a profitable trade. Bit of a double top potential here, but I also feel like if it, if it can break this double top potential, it'll jump up that last point real quick. This is another example of discipline. I mean, I could take 12 ticks right here. I had, um, I mean, it went as far as 
16 ticks. I think 15 ticks. Where's my entry? 95, 25. Okay, so it went 15 ticks my way. But again, there's that temptation to close the trade early. Oh, I'll just close it for 12 ticks. I'll close it for 14. I'll close it for 8 or whatever. And it's not, I can't do that. Um, so that's why if you watch some of my previous videos, um, my first milestone or my first goal was to take 100 trades with absolutely perfect uh, execution, never once moving my target, never once moving my stop, um, never once taking an invalid trade setup, uh, never once doubling down, just perfect disciplined execution for 100 trades um, and that helped me to develop a belief in myself that I am a disciplined trader and over the course of those 100 trades it became easier and easier to be disciplined. I started to believe more deeply that I am a disciplined trader. I'm someone who who can sit here and watch this market and not screw with my orders. Um, so it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy almost, and that's why I call the channel Belief Trader. Uh, and I have that little screen. Um, experience creates belief, and belief motivates behavior. So. I've experienced more than a hundred trades now where I was disciplined. So that leads to a belief that I'm a disciplined trader and therefore that motivates my behavior to behave in a disciplined way. Um, so it's like this little snowball self-fulfilling prophecy kind of thing. But I would be lying if I if I told you that I don't want to close this trade right now. It just really looks like it's going to be a double top here. Oh, there we go. So there's the 18 ticks. 19 ticks. <laughs> I've had a lot of trades, a lot of those trades recently where I went 19 ticks my way um, and stopped me out. What a bummer, but you know what? That's that's not a bad result considering how sketchy this this setup really was. Um, and I'll keep track of whether or not having this rule um, was detrimental or or uh, beneficial to my results. So if this goes all the way back down and would have stopped me out, then that's a benefit. Um, if it ends up going the full 20, 20 or 21 ticks, then that was detrimental to my result. So far, it looks like it was a good idea to have the break-even rule. So anyway, I think that's uh, probably a long enough video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Um, Click the thumbs up button for me. Leave a comment down below. That would be appreciated. And uh, subscribe to my channel. And tell your friends. Okay. See you next time. Thank you.